Hello, welcome to CM Videos. My name is Dr. Michael Okreke. I'm continuing on a previous video that I made on Akan share testing as part of a, a share testing design. So if you haven't seen that video, please look at it in this link. What we are going to do in this video is to show you two things. The first thing is about how do you extract stress strain data from such a test? And the second thing is about how to create a failure envelope based on your account share testing. If this is kind of content that you like, please do subscribe to this channel. So when content like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. So we're going to go straight into a backwards and I begin to demonstrate to you how you can do these two things. Okay, here we are in Abacus and I already ran the test and we looked at the simulations from that previous study. So if you look at here, so what we've got here, if I switch to a first test case, which is a, a tensile test, and then I could show you what's happening here. So this is a tensile simulation. If you run the animation, you could see that in this account share, the sample is being pulled apart nicely and the stress is being built up around that gauge section. So this is, this is expected and it's a nice result. So if we look at the shear test simulation from that previous study as well, it will show you again a nice simulation of a, a really lovely shear testing with one end held and the other end being pulled up. So with the stress being again built around the gripping holes as well as the center which is the gauge section. Then we went on to demonstrate let's say you got a tensile and a shear combined loading on your domain so you could also again see some nice simulation. So in this case there was an expansion and our shear deformation on that scenario. So then the final case that we looked at was where you have a combination of a shear and also a tensile, um, a, sh a shear and a compressive deformation. So again, if you animate that, you could see in this instance, there is a compressive behavior as well as a shear deformation on the domain. So that was where the last video stopped. Now, what we're going to do in this video is to see if we can extract the relevant stress strain data in the gauge section of the structure okay in the gauge section of the structure and just to again, again reflect what we did so if i pick up one of the previous um, cases in terms of our history output we requested some data so in the data that we requested for this tensile case was the strain in the one one direction and the stress in one one direction so what we're basically interested in is in the gauge section of this domain so what's we were following the gauge section of that domain, tracking the strain and the stress in that. So we're going to then use that to plot our stress strain data. Just before we go into that, I have to point you to a video that is again in the card, which is about how to extract stress strain data based on a homogenization approach, based on a volume average homogenization approach. So again, if you want to understand the principle that I'm using here, please do look at that video in the card and it will help guide you as to how to extract stress strain data based on this homogenization approach. So if we're going to get go ahead and do this, so let me just quickly demonstrate. For this first case, which is a tensile deformation, so we're starting with a tensile deformation, and we want to extract the stress strain data of that gauge section. All you need to do is to go here, so there is this create XY data. We are tracking it based on the source, which is the history output. So then when this history output window opens up, what you will notice that there will be a lot of the strain and the stress in that gauge section. So for example, say this is a strain component for this element number 1667 at an integration point of one for element gauge set, element set gauge section. So this is where we want to do this volume averaging. So all I will need to do is I'll hold on, to, I'll, I'll select that and then drag until I get to somewhere where that E11 data ends. So, and that's somewhere around here. So I select all of that and then I click save us. Now, because you want to use the volume averaging approach in doing this. So what you need to then do is to select the average option. So I'm going to call this one, my tensile case E11 average. So that's just to distinguish it from the others. The tensile case E11 volume average case, I'm plotting the XY data and click okay. So it will show you some data of that strain. Now we'll do the same. So you go to S1 and go all the way to the end and again, do the same thing. Volume averaging, okay, is tensile S11 average. And then we we'll click okay. All right, so now we have also the stress uh, time data. Now, 
for stress strain data, you need to combine the stress with the strain. So again, we go back to this create XY data, but no more on the original history output. We're working on operating on the created XY data. We're going to do some operation, um, arithmetic, numerical, whatever operation you want to do. So we then continue. Now there is a, an operator here, which is the combine option. So if you go here, there's this combine option. So we click on this combine option. So we want to combine an X data and a Y data to generate a graph. So our X data will be this TE11 side, double click on that, and also go to the next one, double click on that. And that gives me a combination, which is basically a plot of an X data and a Y data. So you plot that expression, and then it nicely gives you a stress and strain data. Now what you're going to do next is file plugin Excel utility. For this particular current plot, what, what this, this will do is it will export the raw data for this plot profile so that I can then manipulate it in Excel and do whatever I want with it. So this operation would work solely with uh, Windows-based uh, operating system. If you're using a different kind of operating system, then all you need to do is to go back to the raw temporary folder here, double click on that. If you edit on that, the raw data comes up for you and then you can copy that and then into your Excel file. It will work as well. So again, I'll click OK. So what this will do is it will send to Excel the data. So I already have Excel. You should also have Excel installed on your computer for this to happen. So I've got my Excel data. I'll copy that, just that bit. Now what I've done is that I've already created a template that we're going to use for analysis subsequently. So I'll paste into that environment. So this is tensile, that's what I'm looking for. So I'm looking at the tensile case. So I'll paste it in that environment. So it gives me a stress strain data in a tensile scenario, okay? So, and wh what does it give us? Okay, so it calculates the Young's modulus based on the initial two data point in the linear elastic section. It also calculates for us the maximum strength of this material as an absolute term, okay? So this is kind of what we have with this data. So we're going to do the same for our share instance. So I'll go back to this model and I'll switch to the share case. So this is a share instance. And then with this share instance, I'll go through the same process. Okay, original history output. I'll start from here, go all the way to you, get to the end of E12, which is here. So I'll save that as well as a volume average. I'm going to call it my share E12 average okay and then you plot that then you do the same on the second part get to the end save that average as again share um s12 average all right again a volume average data you plot that okay so that data comes across to you and then we'll now operate on this data using that combined function which is somewhere around here so not mother function. So this is a combined function and we are looking for the share one, two and share S one, two. Okay. You plot the expression. So we get the data that we are looking for here. So what do we then do with this particular information? Okay. We will then extract it based on the volume. Okay. So let's do it the other way. So I double click on that, click edit. So I could then copy the raw data right away from here. Okay. Copy that data. Then go to Excel and paste that raw data. So we get the result here. And again, it, it also helps us calculate the Young's modulus and the effective strength. I'll be providing this Excel sheet in the download section of this, of this video so that again, if you really need it, you can extract it and use it for your, your kind of whatever problem you're trying to solve. Okay, so this is the share and the tensile case. Then we're going to look at another case. Let's say a combination of a shear and a compression test case. When we're combining those, what would that mean to us? So let's go back to Abacus and then we'll bring up the case where we're interested in the combined shear. And so if you think about what's happening here, so this is the beginning. We could animate that. And this is a combined combination of the shear and tensile um, and, and compressive case. So again, we'll go through the same process, but in a slightly different case, because remember here we have two, two loads, a, tense, a share load and a compressive load. So what are we going to do with this? So again, our history output will look different. 
So you will have the normal E11 data for the compressive behavior. So this is the compressive data for E11. So we note that first. So get to where it stops, which is probably somewhere around there. So I'm going to save that as a volume average data, but I'm going to call it my combined share E11 average. Combined share E11 average, okay? Now we'll do combined share E12. So there will be two stress and two strain data because it's a combined load. So we note this and save this as, again, an average. So it will be a combined share E12 average. Okay, so we'll plot that. And then we we'll now move on to do the share cases. So we'll start with S1, which is the compressive share, uniaxial share. Okay, so it stops somewhere around here. And then we we'll save that as an average. So this will be CSS11 average. So a combined share with only the share comp the stress component in a uniaxial sense. So we we'll plot that. And then finally we'll take the S12 to the end. And then we'll do that. So we we'll save this as that. So again, a volume average data, CSS12 average. So we we'll plot that data and then we have them all, all there. So what we are going to do basically here is that we've got all this data plotted for us. So the four compressive data, so we need to operate on them. So we operate on this data. So what we are going to do, use the same combined option. So that combined option will have to go with the E11 and S11 to create the plot of the uniaxial case. So, so combine S E11 plus combine S11. So strain and stress plotted together. So we plot that function. Okay. Now what we notice is that it's giving us a compressive behavior. This is fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename that particular plot, which is a current temporary, the current temporary folder. So it's called temp1 here. So I'm going to rename that. So I'm going to call it CSE11 versus CSS11. Um, okay. So just to note what that is. Then I'm going to go back to this operate on XY data, remove what we have on the inside there. Now I'm going to combine the S12, E12, which is the implant sh um, str shear strain with the implant shear stress. So we'll bring the two together and plot that expression. Again, it gives us something a different plot. So it's currently again a temporary data, temporary plot. So I rename that, call it um, CSE12 versus CSS12. All right, so this is fine. So we need to bring the two together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, click on the strain data first. So if I double click here, so this is strain data, the uniaxial data. And then for the second case, I'm going to add it to this current plot. So now we have the uniaxial data first, which is the combined loading in a compressive direction. And we have the share case later, which is again a combined loading in the share direction. So we've got the two data here. So what we are going to then do is, okay, I'm going to plug in this Excel utility current plot. I want to extract all this data at the same time, then click OK. So what it will do is I to extract all this given set of data on this current plot. And basically, if you look at what we have here, so we'll have the uniaxial case and the shear case. So I'm going to select all of them, okay? And then go to the Excel data sheet that I already formatted. Now, we're looking at compression share. So I'll paste that in this environment, okay? Then it replots the original data. So we have a clear compressive share in compression direction and compressive share in the shear direction, which is this other one. So we've got these two things in one plot. So you could see what's happening here when you're trying to do a compressive combined loading. Some part of the model is in compression as shown by the later part of this plot and some are in shear as shown by the upper part. If you look at the moduli, so the moduli are different, the tensile uniaxial moduli behavior and the shear um, moduli behavior as well. So we can also study the strength associated with them. So this strength and that strength, again, in absolute terms, but clearly in the compressive direction, this strength will be minus 57 because it's going in compression. But I'm quoting these numbers in absolute terms. All right, so we've got that plot. So I did the same for the tensor and shear case. 
follow the same process and you get the combined cases here. So I also did the same for the shear case as well, which we've shown. So basically we've got shear, tensile, tensile plus shear, compression plus shear. Now, if you put all of those together, so we have this nice plot, which shows us what is happening in this result. So we've got a nice plot that shows all the interacting systems. So the shear tensile, so this is the shear case, which is kind of brownish. The red one is tensile. The blue one is a combination of tension and shear. However, the tensile value of that. And then tension and shear in shear case would be, is hiding behind. And then on all that. And then of course the purple one is the, uh, the, com the compression data. So this is kind of what you will get from just this four set of simulations that we've carried out on this material. And then of course the other thing is that you can then extract all those moduli values. What I've done with these bits is to put the moduli values in tension and share what the numbers are, their strength in tension and share. And the same thing applies here. So that's really about the stress strain data uh, uh, approach. The final thing I wanted to show here is the failure envelope. You can plot a failure envelope by looking at this data. So what I've done here basically is that I've looked at the shear data and look for the strength value. What is the strength in the tensile case? case? So this is a pure tensile simulation. It will only be dominated by a tensile behavior. There will be no shear, okay? And that's zero. And this is in a, old, um, a zero degree direction because you're pulling the uniaxial, um, the Akan fixture apart. So the angle of loading and angle of orientation of the center line of the Akan fixture is zero. Now the next one is 90 degrees. When you've got the Akan shear, shear fixture, you're pulling orthogonal to the main axis of the Akan shear fixture, which is what you have here. So in this case, you have a pure shear case, but no tensile case at all. And now when you have a combination of a shear and tension, so basically the loading is at angle 45 degrees and that means you have a combination of some tensile value and some shear value. The tensile value is less than the ultimate tensile value. The shear value is also less than the ultimate shear value. And this is because of this interaction in the domain of those two. So if you change the system around and then apply at 135 degrees from the main axis, you end up with similar values. So after all that, then I put them together on a profile like this, where this is the uniaxial case, this point, this is the shear case, this is a 45 degree case, and this is 135 degree case. So as you value, vary those values, you could actually nicely begin to populate the points that create a failure envelope. So you can go ahead and do a compression, a pure compression test, and then hopefully it will end up giving you this value on this other side. So you can see why the Akashia test experiment is really a powerful experiment because you can then use it for investigating different kind of behavior of materials so that you can generate a failure envelope from that. So those are the two things that I wanted to show in this video. If you are interested in seeing the original video that I've made about the Akan share fixture, the setup of it, please look at this point. That's the video that you need to see. If you're also interested in understanding how this um, homogenization approach, this volume average homogenization approach. Again, look at this video at this point that I've made to again show you what you, you, you need to do. Also, there is a playlist where I show models of experiments that I've, I've, I'm carrying out so that at least people can get numerical insight about what this is all about. That's all I wanted to show in this video. Again, if you're interested in this kind of content, please do subscribe to this channel so when contents like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. Thank you and catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.